We're starting off with a pack of these cute little wooden hearts. And a pack of these cute little chicks. We're going to paint both of them with Apple Barrel White acrylic paint. The chick and the heart have both been covered with white acrylic paint, just one coat. Um, I filled in the hole for the chick, but I forgot to fill in the hole for the heart. All I did was put um, a little bit of hot glue in the hole and then wipe off the top and the bottom with my little finger here. I held this on this side and once I squirted in the hot glue, I pressed it down on this side so that both sides would have that. And then when I painted it white, I painted right over it um, and the hole has pretty much disappeared. Now I'm going to cover both of them with some matte Mod Podge. So the chick and the heart are both covered with Mod Podge. I filled in the little hole for the heart with some hot glue. Again, all I did was hold um, my little finger like this on the back, heated up my glue gun, squirted a little in there, took my other little one and squished it until it dried, and then covered it with a little uh, dab of white paint. And then when I Mod Podged it, I Mod Podged the whole thing. So now what I'm going to do is cover these and these napkins that I have. And I'm going to separate the plies. They're both three ply. And I struggled with this a little off camera. Um, in order to separate them, I ended up using just a little piece of um, painter's tape to like catch it and then pull them apart because I was struggling. So I'm just going to pull all the plies off very carefully because I don't want to rip it. If you've done this before, you know how easy it is to, to rip this if you get a little overzealous. I did see another um, crafter say to hang on to these extra plies and that you could print on them. Um, this actually has a little bit of an image on it, so I don't know if I would do that with that ply, but if I'm able to separate it and there's nothing on the other one, I certainly might try that. But I'm not gonna struggle with it right now though. And then I have this one. Again, I used a piece of painter's tape to separate so that I could get the three plies separated because it was very difficult on this one. It was very deceptive that there was even three plies, but the packaging said there was, so I kept trying until I located all of them. So again, separate very carefully. Some spots are a little bit more stuck together than others. And then I'm going to place this over top of the heart. Position it kind of the way I want it. I want the center to kind of come in this little section here. Or maybe there. Hmm. No, it won't cover it all. So we'll go right about just a little bit. Right about there for that one. So I'll go ahead and do that one first. I've got just a piece of parchment paper. I've got my iron heating up, and this is just a scrap chunk of wood that I have. Um, so I'm going to lay down my parchment paper, careful not to move anything. And my um, iron is on, I want to say it's on like 290, but I can't really read it very well. And this is just an iron I got from Walmart. It's a steam fast, but I don't have the steam on. It's just heat. And what I'm doing right now is attaching the napkin using the heat of the iron, reheating the Mod Podge, and then just ironing it on. Remove that. 
I'm going to set this aside for a minute just so it can cool. And I'm going to do my little chick. Decide which direction I want this to go. That way too. Again, position it. Put the parchment paper down. Use your iron. And I just make sure I go around it a few times, pushing on the edges. And I will just give it a few minutes to cool. These have cooled a little bit. So I'm going to remove the excess and I have a variety of little nail files. Um, any of them will work. This is kind of my preference. Just the skinny little um, standard one, but these foamy kind, they work too. You can use a sanding block. You can use sandpaper, whatever your preference is. And you're just going to go in a downward motion and see how it's going to separate it. You can cut some of the excess off if you want to. It's not really necessary. You're just going to go, you can go real easy with it. And it just kind of comes right off. Now, because I'm doing it on camera, it's not going to work for me as well, but there we go. So I'm just going to rip that to get that out of there. Alright, I have the heart done. It took a little time to kind of get into the little spaces and it's still not perfect. There's some little chunkies in there. Um, I had to go get a different nail file, the kind that is pointy and kind of get into some of those spots. But the heart's done. I really like it. It's going to go with this bow. And then I made this green bow and this little shamrock is going to go with it. I actually got this um, shamrock, it's a piece of like press board. It came on this piece, which I got at a local thrift shop, so it was attached to that, um, but it was painted differently. So I took it off, um, I pried it off, you can see the big old spot where the glue was and on the back there. So I pried it off, um, I sanded it down a little bit, I gave it a couple of coats of just a green um, acrylic paint that I had and then I took just a little bit of a um, celery chalk paint and kind of did a very very light dry brushing I don't know if you can see it but it's just really light with some lighter shades of green and you might even be able to see the original polka dots that were on this piece it's like there and there and there I can see if I if I shine it in the light in just the right direction even when I sanded it, they didn't really come off. So I just painted right over them. Um, and I, I don't mind it. So that's going to go with that. And then I've got this bow that I made. And the little chick, if I could pick it up, the little chick is going to go with that. And they're all going to have a little chunk of Velcro on the back, like this one. Um, and then they will attach to my seasonal sign that I have in my office. We're going to start with the honeycomb ribbon.
And how I made the other bows is I measured out 12 inches one strip at 12 inches and another strip at 12 inches this strip we're going to fold in half like so We're going to measure down about two inches and we're just going to uh, scrunch it. I don't know if you can hear it or pick it up on camera, but there is quite a rainstorm going on outside right now. I will certainly take the rain over the snow that many are getting right now, but it is coming down. And while I've got it folded like this, I'm going to go ahead and dovetail the ends where you just fold it in half, cut from the center on a diagonal up to the edges so that you have a cut like that. When you unfold it, it gives you a look like that, a dovetail. And this will be the center of my bow. I'm going to set that aside. This will actually be the tail for my bow. So I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to begin working on the bow itself. I am going to just scrunch the edges. and tuck it between, but I'm going to do it so the non-pretty side is up. For this bow, I will be doing 10 loops, five on this side, five on this side. I'm going to count out four inches. Each of these little blocks represents an inch on my little homemade bow maker. So one, two, three, four. And that is where I'm going to bring the loop over. And I'm going to flip it in the center so that the pretty side is face down this is a one-sided ribbon. If you had a two-sided ribbon, you wouldn't have to do this little twist. But with a one-sided ribbon, you want the pretty side to be facing up when you loop it over. So you have to put that down to the bottom and have this um, showing up. So I twisted it so that it would be that way. I'm going to again count one, two, three, four. And I'm going to fold this one back in the opposite direction. So I have two four inch loops. Just double checking myself here. And we'll twist this one once again so that the pretty side will be available for the looping. I get a little caught up in these sometimes, but, and then I kind of just gauge with the other bow loop where it needs to be. Give it a twist. You want it to come out just a little bit more. And continue this until you have five loops on each side.
fifth loop, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the fifth loop on that side. Twist. Get the fifth loop on this side. I don't have to twist at the end. At this point, I'm just going to cut it. And I, I give enough so that it'll stay in the, the brace here, but I don't give it too much because I'm not making extra tails. All right. So at this point, I'm going to bring in the tail and I'm going to fold it in half. You can measure it out on the ruler or the measuring pad, or you can fold it in half and give it a scrunch. And then just kind of gauge, did you fold it well? I'm notorious for not really doing that very center. Let's see. All right, so now I've done that. I've got my tail. I'm going to grab out the bow itself. Just be careful as you pull it out of there. You don't release it. I'm going to add that on top of the tail. Then I'm going to take the center piece I made and I'm going to put that also on top. And I'm just going to hold it between my fingers while I get a zip tie. Now you can do this with a pipe cleaner. You could do this with some cording, some rope, jute twine, whatever you prefer. So I just gave it a little bit of a, a zip to connect it but not necessarily tighten it. You can see how loose it is still. I'm going to kind of just go through my bow and make sure that the wires and the ribbon is all turned the way I want it so that when I tighten this, it'll do what I want and I'll be able to fluff it the way I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it Just finger tighten it as, as well as I can. If you had um, some pliers or something, you, and you could grab onto it and do it that way. Um, but I'm just going to pull it with my fingers as tight as I can. I think that's about as, as good as I can get it. I'm going to trim off the excess. And there is my squished bow. So now I'm going to take a few minutes and just fluff it up. But before I do that, I'm going to cut the dovetail in this ribbon. I didn't cut it in this before assembling it because sometimes I get off center when I'm assembling it. And then when it comes to this, one piece is drastically longer than the other. So when I cut the dovetail, it looks a little wonky. So I just leave it like this until I'm ready and I've got it all assembled and then I'll cut my dovetail. So then it's like that. And we're going to fluff this bow. I just, on one side, I will stick my fingers in the bows themselves and then I just kind of drag them one way and the other. You can do the same again. Just drag it one way and the other. And then on the final one, if I can get my fingers in it, I just kind of fluff it out and, and pull it one way, whichever way, whichever way you're feeling. And that's just to get it started. There'll be additional fluffing as I get it pulled out and arranged.
I've watched many videos of people making bows, just trying to learn how to make them myself. Um, so I've made some very <laughs> pretty awful bows and I've made some very nice bows. See how this one, I cut the dovetail first. So it is uneven now that I've got it assembled. So one side is much longer than the other. So I'm gonna trim it down because I do like some symmetry. I like the ribbons to be, if not exact, pretty much the same. So that's a little better. Probably could trim a little bit more, but we'll see what this looks like after I get it fluffed. So this is what this bow will look like. It's like I did with the one and a half inch wide ribbon. With this two inch, or I'm sorry, two and a half inch wide ribbon, I'm going to cut two 12 inch strips. With one of the strips, I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna measure two inches in, so one, two and I'm gonna scrunch it. I'm gonna use a little piece of elastic to wrap around my little center piece there. Do it two or three times. I'm gonna dovetail the ends I really like a dovetailed ribbon. If you prefer it um, to be straight across, you could do that. If you prefer it to have the point in the center rather than on the edges, you could do that. It's whatever you prefer. This happens to be what I prefer. So this will be the center. And it's just a little bow with a couple little tails. I'm gonna set that aside. This is gonna end up being the tail so I'm also gonna set this aside. I'm gonna pull my bow maker back in and I'm gonna make the larger bow. Now, with the one and a half inch ribbon, I did uh, 10 loops, five to the right, five to the left. With the larger ribbon, because it is larger and it'll take up more space, I'm actually only gonna do four loops. I'm sorry, eight loops, four to the left, four to the right. Um, because I find that that fills the space for me um, adequately. I'm gonna scrunch the end, shove it through the two rods here. Just like the other bow, I'm going to measure out four, one, two, three, four, and that's where I'm going to make the loop at. And I think I put this on backwards. Let's have it come this way instead of that way. So one, two, three, four, loop it over, run it through the center. I'm going to do everything the same as I did in the um, honeycomb bow, except this one will only have the eight loops, four on one side, four on the other. For the month of May, this is the bow that's going to be used. And I was looking through my craft supplies and all my little decorations and things I have, and I found this bee that I made last year. Um, I used, actually made a few of them, and I used them for a, a wreath that I did, but I had this one extra. And the way I made this was by repurposing some of these tool toppers, I guess. So if you get a 
thing of tulle, typically it has one on this end and one on that end. Um, and I just popped them out and I, I use a decent amount of tulle. So I have a bunch of these, as you can see. Uh, I've just been hanging on to them over the years. So last year I wanted to make a, a wreath and I wanted a big bumblebee, but I couldn't find something that I liked. So I figured I'd make it myself. I used two of these for the body. Um, what I did is I glued one of them to the other, just with a bit of hot glue so that I had this piece. Um, and then I wrapped the entire thing with this black chenille yarn. That it's this real skinny stuff that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Um, so I wrapped the whole thing in that and that's how I got the base of everything. Again, these were hot glued together, so I didn't have to mess with them. Wrapped everything in it. Um, and then once they were wrapped, I took some yellow pipe cleaners, cut them in half, um, two of them obviously, cut them in half and I wrapped one in this section and then hot glued it on the back. Uh, and then, you know, one half here, one half here, so on and so forth. And then just wrapped them around and hot glued them. Uh, I also attached these little wings. I used some of this glittery tool that I have. Um, it just says glitter tool. I think I got this from Walmart. I had some scrap pieces. As you can see, I have some scrap pieces in here. And I cut a strip uh, that looks like it's about two inches, an inch and a half wide. I cut a couple strips that was an inch and a half wide and then I cut them about six inches to eight inches long. And then I took some scissors and I just rounded the edges so they looked more like little wings. Uh, I took a, a little bit more of this, wrapped it in the center and then wrapped it through this hole and then through this hole. It was before I put the pipe cleaners on, um, tied it in the back and glued it down. Looks like there's a lot going on here, but I've already got the Velcro piece attached to this so that I can put it on my seasonal sign. So that's how I made this little bumblebee. Um, and then for his little antennas, I took um, black pipe cleaners, cut them in a third, rolled the little ends, stuck some hot glue on the opposite end, separated the, the yarn, stuck it in there and then push the yarn back together so that it would be inside. And that's how I made this. So this will be my little embellishment to go with my honeycomb bow. For the month of June, I'm going to use this bow and this little styrofoam glittery uh, flower. This flower came from Hobby Lobby in a package of about six or eight of them, I think. Um, and I picked these up in the spring into summer of 2022. Um, I've already attached the piece of Velcro to the back of the bow and the little flower. So that is what will go on my seasonal sign. For the month of July, this bow is going to go with this little styrofoam foam piece. This is from Dollar Tree. It's from last year. It had a little like plastic stick in it so you could um, you know, use it as a little party decor. But I'm gonna use this as my embellishment. I already put the little piece of Velcro on it. Also have a little piece of Velcro on the bow. For the month of August, this is gonna be the bow I use. And this is from the Sam's Club collection that is currently in stores. Um, I found it in January 2023 at my Sam's Club. Um, it's got little watermelons and a little check design. When I purchased it, I thought it was black and white, but as I opened the packaging and looked at it, it's actually a deep blue, like a navy color and white. It still works, I still think it's cute. Um, so I'm gonna use that for the month of August. And with that as an embellishment, I'm gonna make a little ant. I already had this little head made from another project um, I think it was to be a bee's head, um, but I'm going to use it and make a little ant out of it. So I've got the three. I cut this little ball. It's a little styrofoam ball, the little teeny ones that you can get. 
Um, Dollar Tree occasionally has them. I can't always find them there. Walmart has them. Um, I have also seen them at Michael's. So all I did was take a serrated knife and I cut it in half. Uh, so I've got the two halves. And now I just need to paint it black. And then this one has glitter on it. Um, I'm just going to get my glitter once these are painted and dry. And I'll add a bit of glitter to it so it sparkles like this and looks the same. I'm also going to use this pipe cleaner. Um, it was, you know, a whole pipe cleaner that I cut in half. And I also cut another one in half. I'm going to use this as the legs. So once I get this all painted and laid out, um, we're going to put one there. And then I think I'm going to put two in this section. Fold one going this way, fold one going that way. So that'll be its little legs. And I'm going to attach them all to just um, a popsicle stick. I've cut just a little piece off of the rounded edge off of that. So once I have these all painted, I'm going to glue them onto this popsicle stick, which I will also paint black, and put the little legs on, and that will be my little embellishment. So when I come back, this will all be painted. Oh, and I'm just using um, Apple Barrel Jet Black acrylic paint. I've glued the half styrofoam ball that I've painted black and put some glitter on to this popsicle stick. I used some Gorilla Glue um, and then I clamped it for a little bit so that it would stay and dry. It takes forever for the Gorilla Glue, so um, I think I'm going to just glue the rest of it on with hot glue. Um, so here's his little legs, just out of a pipe cleaner that I've bent. Uh, the way I want it. I'm going to put it on the outside of the popsicle stick. I'm just going to put a little glue there. Plop this down. It did not catch my fingers with that hot glue, which I was lucky. Um, I should be wearing my little silicone protectors. I didn't that time, so the next time I will. Anyways, so I'm going to also glue this down. I have my hot glue on a medium temp, so I'm hoping that'll be okay with the, um, with the styrofoam. But I am going to put just a little bit of this down. Uh, I just want the hot glue for more of an immediate fold. I can get this to come out. I do really like the Gorilla Glue, it just takes forever to dry. You can probably hear my cat, he's meowing. He likes to drink from the faucet in the bathroom and um, he just actually had a drink from that faucet but he didn't feel it was sufficient so now he's going to meow at us until we get up it and go give him some more water. So that's attached. I'm going to take these legs um, which I bent this out a little bit further so that it could go around the little silicone ball. Um, so it's the same size as that. It's half of a pipe cleaner. Um, and then I just bent it appropriately. So now it will fit around the silicone ball so it looks like his little legs are coming from the center there. Oops. Okay, so I'm not going to do this because I don't want to burn myself. Good thing I did since it just got on my fingers. I'm going to bend it to the little legs. <laughs> so cute. I guess if an ant could be cute. And then this little one, which is bent just like the first one, I'm going to attach it just like I did the first one on the underside there.
and then last but not least this little back end just putting a little bit of the Gorilla Glue and a couple blobs of hot glue and then attaching those rear and then there's my little ant I can bend his little legs down so that they lay a little better but there he is and I was thinking I have this little wooden I think it was a sticker, had a little styrofoam sticky thing uh, last summer from Dollar Tree and I colored it to look like a watermelon um, just with some, I think I just used some Sharpies to color it in. Um, but I was thinking of sticking that right there to the back so it looks like he's carrying a watermelon and then that will be the bow. For the month of September it's going to be a sunflower theme. I've made this bow and I'm going to use this little sunflower. Uh, this is one that I picked up on some stems from Walmart um, last year. They were the sunflowers they had available. It's got a really long stem, so I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue to, I need to even cut it a little closer maybe. when flying somewhere but I'm going to use some hot glue to stick that on just squishing the piece of velcro into the hot glue that I applied. It does have a sticky backing but just to make sure it stays longer a little bit of hot glue and this will be the embellishment with that bow.